Good afternoon, you're watching Keys TV News, I'm Tiffany Sweeney. Footballer Fabrice Mwamba has announced he is set to be the official race starter for this year's Great Manchester Run. The former Bolton Wanderers midfielder collapsed while playing an FA Cup game against Tottenham Hotspur in March last year. Mwamba has made a full recovery despite his heart stopping for 78 minutes. The ecstasy-like drug PMA may have been a key factor in the deaths of two women in Cheshire. Rachel Clayton and Emma Speed were found dead at a house on Crompton Road in Macclesfield. Toxicology results found both had taken PMA, a drug that is commonly referred to as pink ecstasy. Greater Manchester Police are rivalling the FBI in their social media output. All staff are Twitter trained and they have over 60 accounts to cover the Manchester area. The Chief Constable, Peter Fahey, has said that they have taken to social media in a bid to boost communication in the wake of unavoidable job cuts. Uh, you, I think the only way you can do this job is if you really enjoy it. Uh, it obviously does have its frustrations, we have our bad days, but um, it is a, an amazing challenge to lead an organisation like this. I have an amazing workforce um, and Greater Manchester just presents all sorts of policing challenges, so I'm very lucky it's a great job. Every police force um, is facing, sadly, the same level of, of cuts. Um, I think there's always this argument between Manchester and Birmingham uh, as to which is the second city. Uh, I'd be very clear that I think um, you know, Manchester is the second city. That's taken into account London is the first. And, you know, and that is quite seriously just about you know, the sheer number of events that take place here, the huge profile of the football, um, the number of visitors that we get, you know, the number of big events like the party political conferences. So there is just something about Manchester and Greater Manchester, um, you know, which, which captures the, the public imagination and does put a, you know, a particular profile around the force and what we do. We, we, we know the realities of the economic situation. There is no point in asking for more money. It is about greater freedom to work in a different way with local people and with other agencies here in Greater Manchester so we can be more effective in reducing crime. Now, the University of Salford's Journalism Awards are coming up on the 9th of May and joining us today is the awards committee member, Fizza here. Hi, Fizza, thank you for joining us today. Hi, Tiffany. Now, tell us a bit about the Journalism Awards then. Well, like you said, they're taking place on the 9th of May and they are happening at the DPL Lab, which is downstairs here in Media City. And it's basically a celebration of the 350 journalism students we have here because we have excellent abilities, efforts and skills and we want to recognise that and of course showcase it on this night. So how can students submit their work and when is the deadline? Deadline is tight, we have one week left so deadline is next Friday on the 26th of April so we need to get entries in ASAP and all the information about the categories, how to submit, where to submit to is on our website that's Salford Uni Journalism Awards .eventbrite.co.uk and why do you think this Journalism Awards is going to be better than last year? So have we got any special guests or anything exciting lined up? I'm glad you asked that, Tiffany, because this year it is going to be bigger and better. Uh, we have a cinematic theme almost, so it's going to be almost like the student Oscars, for example. So you can come with your lovely dress and we want the guys in their suits and ties. So um, very Hollywood and formal. cinematic. Formal. Let's keep it sophisticated, yeah. though. Okay, and what about um, Twitter? Is there going to be a hashtag on the day where people can keep involved in what's yes, going on? Yes, we have our Twitter account up right now, so it's at UOSJA13. So everyone get tweeting, followers, and hashtagging. Let's start talking about the Journalism Awards now. Any questions you have, anything you want to ask us, just tweet us and get hashtagging. And what about the judges? Have we got any judges confirmed? Yes, we do have uh, some industry people, some professionals, we have people from the BBC, ITN and of course our very own tutors and lecturers. Okay and what about tickets? How can people get hold of tickets? Are they still available? Well uh, I would like to confirm that tickets have now sold out oh, unfortunately. No. Yes yeah, so I hope you got your ticket Tiffany. Yes I did. <laughs> <laughs> so yes they sold out this morning um, they went really fast um, but you still can submit work like I said submission deadlines next week. And what date is it and what time? Does it start, the event? The event is on 9th of May, Thursday, mm -hmm. and it starts at 6pm and will end around 9pm. Okay, everyone's looking forward to that. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you.
The annual Two Cities Varsity Boat Race is here again this weekend. The race between Manchester University and University of Salford is taking place at Salford Quays on Saturday and starts at 1pm. Andy Pass and TJ Hollis have been training the team through all kinds of weather to get ready for the race. Usually we train to nine times a week, um, try and get on the water five or six times and then twice on a Saturday, twice on a Sunday, uh, maybe a couple of early mornings as well and half six and then we have several land sessions for the week as well, so it's, it's pretty full and intense. Um, yeah, training's going really well, it's been pretty intense, um, obviously this race is like, really short, so it's about 600 metres. I uh, usually do sort of 5k races, so trying to get a lot more intense, um, but slightly shorter sessions, so that's a good thing for people to have here. Now joining me in the studio is Kate Emery with all this week's entertainment news. Hi Kate, thank you for joining me. Hi Tiffany. Um, first, the View Cinema's film of the week is Olympus Has Fallen. <laughs> uh, this film was about a former bodyguard of the president, Michael Banning, who is played by the gorgeous Gerard Butler. Uh, Banning finds himself trapped in the White House during a terrorist attack and it becomes his responsibility to rescue the president. Um, the cast is brilliant and it also stars Morgan Freeman and Alex Eckhart plays the part of the president. So this film is a definite must-see, uh, if not only to admire Gerard Butler in action. Definitely, I love Gerard I Butler love Gerard so Butler. much. He's uh, a great actor. Yeah, and you can go to watch that at the Lowry Cinema any time from now because that was released on Wednesday. Okay. Um, next is Oblivion, which has gone right to the top of the box office. Yep. It's starring Tom Cruise. It is about a man who was left on Earth after a long-running War of the Worlds has left the planet in ruins. Well, that Super Bowl was played right here. Jesus, tell me it was a classic. Classic game. 80,000 people on their feet. Seconds left on the clock. No. So Hubie throws a Hail Mary. Touchdown! 166, back online. 60 years ago, Earth was attacked. We won the war, but they destroyed half the planet. Everyone's been evacuated. Nothing human remains. We're here for drone repair. With a mop-up crew. This is Jack Harper. I'm good to go. Two more weeks, Jack. Then we can finally leave and join the others. Don't take any chances. very much a sci-fi film not my cup of tea but definitely a good watch i don't know i quite like sci-fi do you uh, yeah, are I you do. a secret geek kate uh, <laughs> i don't know about a geek but i do like a bit of sci-fi oh like a bit of sci-fi and a bit of tom cruise oh definitely <laughs> uh, well moving on to live entertainment yeah uh, the larry theater is showing the full monty both tonight and tomorrow nude uh, yes, <laughs> the show, which is based on the BAFTA award-winning film, is brought to life on stage by award-winning director Daniel Evans. The reviews are fantastic. It's supposed to be a really funny one to go and see, and I'm sure I would uh, enjoy that one. A lot much. of ladies will as well. <laughs> yes, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, and finally, for entertainment news, Philip Schofield from this morning has spoken about his partying past. Uh, he said, uh, by the way, when I say partying, my weakness has always been booze. I never got much into drugs because I wasn't very good at it. Um, but this is talking about his days as a BBC children's presenter. So, Wow, I would have never thought that about Philip. I know, you wouldn't think so, but he's got many secrets, that man. Deep, dark secrets. Thank you so much for joining Thank me, you, Kate. Tiffany. We are part of a proud nation, pooch lovers, and many of us see our dogs as our faithful best friend. The Manchester Museum is holding an exhibition, Breed the British and Their Dogs. Earlier this week, I went down to find out more. Breed reveals the enduring and affectionate relationship between the British people and their dogs. It explores the very beginnings of pedigree dog breeding in Britain. The exhibition has been developed with the University of Manchester's History of Science. Manchester Museum is holding an exhibition called Breed the British and Their Dog. It explores the relationship between the owner and its dog. It's open until April the 14th and it's free for anyone to come along. It's simply about uh, the phenomenon of pedigree dog breeding which uh, started in Britain from about the mid 19th century onwards. Uh, so we explore why it happened in Britain, how it came about, the different type of people involved in it uh, and explore the wonderful history of these different types of dogs as well. 
Each dog expresses different British characteristics. This event focuses on six pedigree dogs. Select. Uh, those dogs, those breeds, which had some fantastic stories associated with them uh, that tell you something about British character and British history as well. Uh, so those six breeds are uh, the Bulldog, obviously, the British Bulldog, uh, the Bloodhound, uh, the Borzoi, which is a peculiar one which very many people haven't heard of, uh, the Irish Wolfhound, uh, the Collie and the Pekingese. The exhibition displays video footage of dogs over the years and has been extremely popular with families. Um, I think because the dogs are a really good height for small children, they really enjoy it. The Pekingese has gone down really well. As you can see, his tongue sticking out, so um, we've even had a little girl came and bought a card, a little Christmas card for him as well, so yeah, it's gone down really well. The response has been positive and it is definitely a must-see event. Tiffany Sweeney reporting for Keys TV News. And now with the sport, joining me in the studio is Thomas Deakin. Thanks, Tiffany. Uh, Sir Chris Hoy retires from cycling. He won six, six Olympic gold medals and 11 world titles. We thought he would be competing at the 2014 World Cup uh, Commonwealth Games, but he felt it could not go on. In football, we're going to travel to Stoke on Saturday, with both sides needing a win to help them beat the drop. On Sunday, Man City will head to the capital to play Spurs. The Blues feel confident after beating Chelsea at the weekend in the FA Cup semi-final. And then Monday, Man United are playing Aston Villa at, Tr at Old Trafford. With the Reds close in, closing in on the title, if City lose, they will be crowned champions. In Rugby Union, Steve Diamond had admitted he is embarrassed that Sale Sharks have been involved in a relegation battle this season. The Sharks travel to Northampton looking to build a gap between the bo both the bottom two sides. On Rugby League, Brian Noble wants to leave a legacy at Salford Reds after being unveiled as the new head coach of Sol Super League Bottom Club. The Reds take a fellow struggle to Castlefield on Saturday. Finally, Lancashire Cricket Club have held me a media open day recently showing off their new kit and their newly re redeveloped stadium. Emily Bergen went to find out more. A new season and a brand new look for Lancashire County Cricket Club. They showed off their new 2020 kit along with their one-day kit and their test cricket kit too. £45 million was also spent on redeveloping the grounds and training facilities. From when you used to play in the other way for, for 18 years, but, um, but it's working well, the stadium looks fantastic and when it's, when it's finally finished it'll, it'll be a great place to come and watch cricket. Yeah, the stadium's fantastic, we've got new facilities for the players, we've got new gym, water treatment area, um, it's just a fantastic development and looking forward to having the Ashes here later in the summer as well. And the team are feeling confident ahead of the new campaign. Motion, I think, first, out of the second division to the first division and then at the same time try and win one of the one-day trophies. And finally, we would like to wish good luck to Salford University student Samuel Bond, who will be running in the Virgin London Marathon this Sunday. Congratulations for raising over £1,100. Remember to look out for the Rhino. today remember you can keep up to date with keys news by visiting our website keysnews.net and don't forget you can now like us on facebook thank you for watching goodbye <laughs>